call on my own uh, only because I'm, uh, I, I think, well, I, it's not, I think, I know how the business works to a certain extent. And the last thing you are is in charge of the time. You know, the, you have no control over that. So, you know, it wasn't a, a one year shot to stardom again, but I figured, you know, one year, maybe not so much, they'll forget about it. And, I'll do it. and I was ready to write it out. But as I said, I missed everybody. They were my best friends. You know, I, I wasn't having fun the way I did on Dallas when I would do other jobs. So it was it was the perfect timing, again, of, of them wanting me and me wanting to come back. What about as an actor? Like, what was your reaction? You were obviously invested in the character. What was your reaction when they said, you're not the evil twin, like you are Bobby, this is a dream? I mean, did you at least have some, like, what? <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I did to a certain extent, like, really, they were going to do the dream thing. And, and, but then, you know, I was trained before I thought I would be a television actor, you know, to do theater. And, you know, there's so many classics that rely on dreams to solve problems that, it, you know, when Leonard talked to me about it, I just went, oh, yeah, it's like Alice in Wonderland. It's like the Wizard of Oz. You know, it's like, uh, you know, a good, half a dozen Shakespeare plays are all, you know, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. I mean, come on, the, the dream is a fail safe way to solve problems if you don't know how to solve them. And so the dream thing made perfect sense. We we offended people. Uh, I will admit that there was a fan base that was offended, but for the right reasons. Our fan base on Dallas was so loyal that even though the show was not as good uh, on that year, and not because of my absence, but because of the, the production itself, um, they still watched it. They were still fans, and they and they they mourned, if you want to put it that way, Bobby's death. They were invested in dealing with it and seeing Mama sit by the graveside and all of this stuff that went on. And then for us to just say King's X didn't work, ha ha, you know we're back. Um, certain people were upset, uh, but they continued to watch. They were still fans, and uh, over time, I was forgiven for it, sure. Yeah, I mean, I was a fan. I mean, I didn't really have a reaction one way or another, but right, I mean, people were divided. People were jumping, you know, jumping the shark, and this is the, you know, and listen, you've you've done your own parodies of it. Like, there have been parodies. It's still parodied of, like, right. this is the craziest thing in the world. There were a lot of angered people, and it was almost, like you said, second to Aisha Jarrett, like the outrage of Bobby in the shower and he's alive and people were thrilled to have you back, but also not thrilled. It was yeah, a strange yeah. time. I, I totally got that. But again, you mentioned that we've now been parroted as, a, uh, as well as parodied. Uh, you know, Bob Newhart did it on his show. You know, at the end of his second big series, he wakes up with Suzanne Plachette and it was just a dream. And it was obviously on the nose uh, reference to the Dallas dream years. So, you know, it's been, it's happened a lot. That's the highest form of flattery, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, to your point, would the public have been any happier if you did come back? You know, Patrick Duffy is now on Dallas playing another character for the next five years, not Bobby. That would make, that would, I think, anger people to the nth degree. I think they would have been angrier for a longer period of time. And I think it would have turned them off once they got used to the fact that, hey, everything's back to normal and we can do the battling Ewings all over again. They loved it. They did love it. You know, like we talked about before, you know, you go, jobs come and go, you know, it's, it's acting, but, you know, you don't make lifelong friends on most acting jobs in most TV series. That's just not how it works. Like, yeah. talk to me about, you know, what is it like, you know, having been friends with Larry to the end, your friendship with Linda continues, like, what is that like? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I said I lived under and continue to live under this umbrella of good fortune um, that uh, a man from Atlantis, my dear friend and is a dear friend to this day is Belinda Montgomery, who played, you know, the doctor who sort of uh, takes care of that underwater guy. Uh, she's a dear friend to this day. Um, then I met Hagman and Linda, Kenny Kershival, uh, Steve Keneally, Victoria, you know, the whole, I, I was just about a month ago, I was uh, in Germany with Linda Gray and Charlene Tilton, you know. And I saw that. 
every time we're together, it's this fun fest. We just love each other. We can't, we can't get close enough. So that was all of Dallas. When I left Dallas, I thought, well, that's probably it. I don't know if I'll work with somebody I'm that close to. And a week later, I walked into the room and there's Suzanne Summers. And I've said this before. She became my Larry Hagman. She became instantly a dear friend. We've been dear friends forever. You know, she calls me her second husband, you know, and Alan, her real husband is fine with it. So that's okay. Um, but Linda, Linda Pearl, not Linda Gray, but Linda and I just were uh, over at Suzanne's house in, in Palm Springs, you know, just because it's, it's family. So I've been really fortunate to be with dear friends on every show I was on. And I have said, I've never had a bad day at work. I've never had a single day at work that I felt was a horrible experience. Not wow. Really. Do you keep in touch with Victoria Principal too? B Victoria and I probably once a year connect up uh, where, you know, Linda and I are, you know, always texting and that kind of thing. Um, but that's just a matter of choice and circumstance. Uh, Kenny uh, would, uh, we never got together that much, but we would always text or phone each other. You know, he phoned me maybe a week before he passed. Steve Canale is still, you know, a brother basically to me, lives up in Ojai in California. Um, but we tend to not get together as much unless it's a, a retrospective of sorts. And then we're together. And then it's, again, it's just like going back to work. It's the funnest thing ever. What about the, um, what about Priscilla Presley? You know, I mean, I know she's going through a lot now, of course, oh I can't imagine. Yeah, I got, uh, you know, I was fortunate to be able to get a message to her just to, you know, not to say I understand, because you don't, but to just say, I'm here, you know, and whatever you can get from that is what I want to give you. Um, working with her was amazing. Well, first of all, when I heard it was going to be Priscilla Presley, I did what everybody else did. I went, Elvis's Priscilla Presley? Really? And yeah, so the first, our first scene was our, uh, in the script, was Bobby meeting Jenna again, because they were girlfriend, boyfriend from early days. So here we are in the in Billy Bob's in, in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, which is one of the largest cowboy nightclubs on the planet. It's just huge. And we had it as our set that day, you know, maybe a hundred extras all dancing and everything. And here's Priscilla Presley in my arms on the dance floor, right after we said, hello, nice to meet you. And then I'm, I'm wooing my ex-girlfriend who's Priscilla Presley. It was unbelievable. It was, you know, it was another one of those gifts that, you know, you're honored to receive in our business. Uh, and that's, you know, working with Priscilla. But in, in actuality, the same thing is true in retrospect for me, working with Barbara Bill Geddes. You know, I wasn't as aware as I should have been as to the royalty that she represents in terms of theatrical and film actress extraordinaire. I knew Jim Davis because I was addicted to old cowboy movies on television. So I knew who he was. I knew Haggy from I Dream of Jeannie, you know. Uh, 